So hey everybody, um, today I am here with Madeline, or Madeline, I'm sorry, from That's Small. That's all right. <laughs> and we're gonna be talking about different herbs and how you can identify them and some of the uses. We do wanna give a disclaimer that we're not medical professionals. So what we're given is just for you know educational or even um, educational or entertainment purposes. Um, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give her a chance to speak about her channel and just anything that you want to let us know real quick. Okay. Um, hello. Uh, my channel is Small Seeds. And uh, up until this point, I've been really trying to focus on common edible and medicinal wild plants, um, mostly the ones that you'll find growing wild in your backyard, like we're, we'll, we will be talking about today. Um, so basically, up to that, up to this point, that's what the channel's about. Um, I plan on going into gardening a little bit more in the future and growing your own medicinal herbs and possibly some videos on seed saving. Um, so we'll see how that goes. But uh, before we start, I would just like to also um, add to the, the the thing that we're not doctors or anything. I am by no means an expert on this topic. I am just very enthusiastic about it and constantly trying to learn more. So um, I really try to encourage people to um, research, get their research from multiple trusted sources, and that way you can learn a lot more about each plant and sometimes uh, different herbalists or other foraging enth enthusiasts will be able to teach you different things. Um, so with that being said, do you want to go? go? Yeah. Do you want to tell us a little bit about like the property that you live in or live on currently? Yeah. Um, so we actually it's we have like a little homestead going on here and um, there's a lot of different wild edible and medicinal plants. Um, we're lucky enough to live really close to a state forest. So um, there's lots of wonderful edible treats in there, too. I try not to harvest much from there. Um, but before we lived here, we were actually living in, a, in, a, in an apartment in uh, Wheeling, West Virginia. And that's when I really started to get enthusiastic about all this. And I really wanted to uh, start gardening, but we didn't have the space to do it. So uh, foraging and wild crafting and making herbal remedies at home, was, at home was really how I got into everything. And I think it's a really great step for people who, um, uh, really want to start growing their own food or herbs um, to learn about the wild plants that you have growing all around you. And um, it's kind of like a little gateway into this lifestyle, I suppose. <laughs> right. Uh, so we can say hello to the people that are here. So hello to F.R. Humphrey. He says hello. hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us. And Pit Stop Kitchen and Garden, Tina, thank you for joining us. Hi. And Garden again was here as well. Thank you for joining. Greetings to everybody. Um, sovereign Energy. Oh, my first time seeing you. It's nice to meet you. Okay, so let's go ahead into the first herb. So we're first going to talk about dandelion. That's probably the most common um, and probably really easy to identify. So I have some here, I'll show them. And if you want, you can talk a little bit about it. Okay. Yeah, she says, I'm new. Yeah, nice to meet you. <laughs> okay, so the first herb that I have here, I have some dandelion. And I think that it's easy to identify because the leaves kind of look like little arrows. I don't know how well you can see the leaf. It, it looks good, yeah. Yeah, so they're like deeply toothed around the edges and um, the leaves, they grow in a basal rosette formation, meaning that they grow um, directly from the base of the plant and they kind of overlap each other a little bit and um, it kind of loosely makes a rose kind of look to it. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And you say you're not an expert. She. <laughs> No, I'm really not. I'm really not. I swear. <laughs> I have some of the yellow, uh, the flowers here. And then when it goes to see, I think that's like really common because a lot of times people just blow it. It looks um, just a little circle with the dots. Yeah. Um, so I, have, 
I'll share my screen to show you um, some other pictures of it as well. Let's see. Okay, so let me get to the right page. It's a little slow, sorry. Okay, so I have it here. Um, I just put some notes. The leaves, the roots, the flowers, they're all edible. And it's a toxin remover. Um, it boosts the immune system. So I like to take the tea for it to detox. And I also know that people use it as a substitute for coffee. Yes, you um, can roast the roots in the oven and then steep them as a coffee substitute. Absolutely. Um, some common preparations made from the roots are that uh, tea or herbal infusion from the roots. Um, I often see it in tincture form. Uh, and like you said, for detoxification, um, specifically detoxification of the liver, um, it's really good for digestive health. And um, the roots are like up to 45% inulin. Um, which is great for um, clearing out pathogens in the digestive system. Um, it's also good, it helps to normalize blood sugar levels and um, it might be a really helpful uh, thing for people um, with type two diabetes actually. I was reading a little bit on that yesterday. Um, and like you said, yeah, the leaves are edible and the flowers as well. Uh, the leaves tend to be more bitter, um, but in the springtime, they have less of that bitter taste to them. You can add them to soups, stews, and salads, um, green smoothies. They're great for juicing as well. And um, some common things that people do with the flowers is they make um, dandelion wine, dandelion jams, and jellies, and you can even... Um, dip them into batter and fry them into fritters. Um, and then as uh, you can also use it topically. So a lot of people will infuse the flowers into oil and add them into salves for uh, minor cuts and other skin irritations. Um, and I believe the leaves are high in vitamins, vitamin A, vitamin K, I believe, and vitamin C, and then they contain some minerals like uh, phosphorus, potassium, and iron, uh, calcium, and let me just make sure I didn't give you the wrong information. Uh, potassium, iron, and calcium. Um, so yeah, dandelion is a very versatile plant. Yeah, that was really good information. And um, someone asked, can you talk about dandelion lookalikes? Dandelion lookalike. So I know that there, I can't remember the name of it. Um, however, I know that a good indicator for dandelion is that it has um, a milky sap in it, in the roots, leaves, and uh, stems. And that might be an indicator. I do have a my little field guide on hand. So this right. one's good because it does include um, it includes toxic lookalikes, so I'm not sure if it'll have any of the edible lookalikes. Right now, Can I'm pretty sure with dandelion, the, um, it does have lookalikes that are also usable. Um, Can you show us your book, your field yeah, guide? Yeah, um, this is the Peterson Field Guide to Edible Wild Plants, and it's for Central and uh, Northern America. It's really helpful um, when there's plants. If I'm just like out and about taking a walk and I see something, I, I love having it on hand. Um, right. I'll grab a leaf or something. I can answer his question. I have mine too. Mine okay. is wild edible plants. And this is North American as well. You always want to okay. make sure you can get it even more specific sometimes, but you want to make sure you get it specific so you can find the herbs that are going to be around you. But dandelion, it usually comes up in the spring, but um, so there's no poisonous lookalikes. Okay. So, but chicory is off is another one that will look like it. And it said all of them that are in the same species. So I'll write it in the comments what it's called. Okay. 
Yeah, I, I, okay. Wild lettuces are also lookalikes and they have um, their a wide range of medicinal benefits as well. And then uh, you mentioned chicory and mm -hmm. chicory is also used very similar with the root. You can roast it into a coffee substitute as well. Right. Um, and it's also great for liver detoxification. Um, the only difference that I, I mean, it, they look uh, different, but the, the flowers of chicory are like a really beautiful light, like a bright light blue color. Um, yeah. It says um, in early growth that chicory looks similar. I guess. It's oh, OK. That makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. OK, so let's uh, catch up. TT's Urban Pantry. Thank you for stopping by. And Sovereign Energy says I used to play with them when playing outside as a child. Yeah, I remember that, too. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the everyday life of OCD is chick. She says, hello, everybody. Sovereign energy. I played with them as a child, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's why I wanted to start with it, because I think people are really familiar with them. Ranch dressing might help with the bitterness. Yeah, that's true, too. Yeah, it is mm -hmm. very, it's bitter. Yeah. And, and uh, like I said before, in early spring, before it, it flowers, um, that bitterness isn't as prominent but it's still pretty bitter. Um, yeah. But I, I know that when you're cooking it, you can kind of like, uh, you can boil it first to help get some of that bitterness out. But I personally, um, like with many of the uh, plants we'll be talking about, I think that they're best used, um, clean them off and use them raw because all of those nutrients in there can um, be, a lot of them can be lost when you cook them. So I try to use them in salads or uh, juice them, add them to green smoothies. And like a little tip, if you do want to add them to soups or stews or stir, fr stir fries and dishes like that, um, is just like add them in at the very end, like five minutes before you're uh, ready, your soup is ready, you can just add them in quick and that might help to maintain some of those, um, some of the nutrition. And so F.R. Humphrey says hawk's beard looks similar, but a different flower as well. Okay. Thank you. And then Tina says, what about a weed called bitter lettuce? Oh, and I didn't. And this is the um, family that I added here. I'm so, not sure what this is, F.R. Humphrey. Uh, what's the crepus? Crep is that a herb? I'm not familiar with it. And bitter lettuce, I I know there are a lot of different like wild lettuces. Um, I don't know if I've ever uh, read about specifically bitter lettuce, but I know that with wild lettuce, that wild lettuce does have a, a milky sap to it as well. And um, I've never used it to this point. So uh, just a little disclaimer there, I'm not very experienced with it, but I do know that um, a lot of people use the milky sap of wild lettuces as like a painkiller. Um, so I definitely want to try something out with wild lettuce this year. Let's see if I can find a... So Sovereign Energy says bitter vegetation is good throughout the body. Bitter equals good for us, yes. So it does denote that it has um, those beneficial uh, nutrients that we need. Absolutely. And about the lettuce, the wild lettuce is also good for a uh, painkiller, a natural painkiller. Mm -hmm. So Best Yet Journey says, welcome everyone to Triple H and Small Seeds Live talk about weeds in your backyard. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, do we have another question or are we going to the next one? Um, I'm not sure what this, what the comment was about the crepus, but I guess we can. That sounds familiar. It sounds maybe like a, the name of a, a plant. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, so we can go to the next one. I guess I'll look it up too. Okay. Let's see, Let's see what he's talking about. Yeah. Okay. So the next one that we were going to talk about is the purple dead nettle. Oh, I'm sorry. It's called prickly lettuce. I prickly guess. Prickly lettuce. Okay. Okay. There's another question. So, hey, oops, 
what happened to my screen. Sorry. So, hey, Kelly, she said, not related to dandelion. Do you guys have experience with milkweed? Kelly, hey. <laughs> so milkweed um, is actually uh, toxic when you can't eat it raw. Um, but for in the in the spring, the, the young shoots are edible. And um, I've actually never prepared. That's another one I haven't prepared. I, I'm, I'm definitely used to the more like common wild backyard edibles for sure. Um, but milkweed um, also has... Uh, edible seed pods that can be sauteed. Um, but with, specifically with milkweed, you, uh, you have to cook it to be able to use it to neutralize the toxin contained within it. And I feel like there's another edible thing to milkweed. I just can't think of it right now, but young shoots mm -hmm. and then the uh, seed pods as well. And milkweed, um, is, that's um, good for the pollinators. Yeah, uh, it was really good mm -hmm. for uh, like um, butterflies as well. Mm -hmm. So Stinky Puddle Ranch, hey, thank you for joining us, uh, Missy Grando. Good afternoon, good people. Thank you for joining us, Missy. Okay, so we can go to the next one. Um, that was the purple dead nettle. Yes. Yes. Um, so, let's did see. you want me to pull up uh, pictures that I have? Yeah, okay. sure. Okay, I think that so would help. Bear Stop. with me. Yours first. I'm very new to this. And I did pick some of this as well, but it usually is flowers more. Let's see if I can get it on screen. It usually flowers more. They're purplish flowers. If you can, can you make it out? Yeah. But it's mm -hmm. kind of hard to see, and I think it started shriveling up. Okay. But so I, it looks like the tops are kind of... Uh, so we do of it. Too. So it's kind of hard to to. So my screen yeah, is being shared. Okay. Here so we yeah. Go. So I figured we would talk about both purple dead. Oh, what did I do? Oh, I forgot. Okay, sorry. So <laughs> I figured we would talk about uh, purple dead nettle and henbit because they're commonly confused look likes. Um, so the purple dead nettle is, uh, I don't know if you can see my mouse, but it's this one. And with purple dead nettle, the oh, leaves are like triangular or heart-shaped and they, fa they face downwards. They're pretty fuzzy. And the, high, uh, the closer to the top of the plant you get, they are uh, purple or like a reddish color. Um, now, both henbit and purple dead nettle are members of the mint family. So they have the squared stems to them. Uh, the flowers look very similar to one another. They are tubular flowers. And um, one thing that might help you in identif identification with the two is that henbit usually has a longer tube to its flower. And the main difference between these plants is in the leaves. So um, like I said, the purple dentil has like a triangular leaf and then the henbit has a circular leaf. Um, uh, it's, a little more deeply scalloped around the edges than the purple dead nettle. And then, um, so the leaves on henbit grow directly attached to the stem, while um, the leaves on purple dead nettle are attached to the stem by petioles, which are basically just like smaller stems that attach a leaf to a main stem. Um, but on henbit, towards the lower half of the plant, the leaves are attached by petioles. But if you go to the upper half, you will notice that the leaves are just directly attached to the stem. So that's the main difference when you're trying to uh, distinguish between the two of them. So let me see if I can- Okay, now we can see the mouse. Okay. Screen back up. And, okay, stop, share screen. There we go. Oh, okay. Um, Sorry, again, I'm new to this. And I also should let you know that um, and let the people watching know that my laptop screen is broken. So I am look, my webcam works on my computer, but then I have to look at my t a TV screen that I have hooked up. So if I'm looking at, looking here, it's because I'm watching you talk. So I'll right. try to look at the webcam. And so like, um, what was that? No, like you said, I'm still figuring out with the sharing the screen. So can you share yours again? Because I couldn't pick up when you were using the mouse. So if you just oh, want yeah. to do that again, so I don't. Um, it, can you see so that they, now? Let me see. 
Are you, you have to share it again. It's oh. not shared right now. Yeah. 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 That would be helpful, huh? Okay. So. And um, Lydia says, I have the one to the left when you were showing your pictures. Okay. Um, and. Um, Nikki says, I've seen the purple dead nettle in my yard. Okay. Okay. So here it's shared again. Okay. okay. So if I maximize it, can you see it like that yeah. or should I? Okay. So um, let me do that. Sorry. That's okay. Right. So um, both of these plants are used similarly in um, herbal medicine. They are both uh, all um, the flowers, leaves, and stems are edible. Um, the texture is a little off-putting because they're very fuzzy. So when you're adding them into a salad, I try to like add the, the leaves in liberally. And then um, they're great added to smoothies or uh, juices. They're both high in fiber. Um, so I guess if you wanted that fiber, you probably wouldn't juice it, but add it to a smoothie. Um, they're high in fiber and different antioxidants, um, iron as well. And um, so specifically the henbit has been used for um, arthritic pain as a um, anti-inflammatory um, to help ease and soothe arthritis pain. And it's also said to be a stimulant and the purple dead nettle specifically is used um, for seasonal allergies to help alleviate the symptoms associated with seasonal allergies and um, it's, uh, they're both anti-inflammatory, both have um, some antioxidant properties to them. Um, so they're also great for wound healing and you can infuse them into oils, uh, use them as a poultice, add an infused oil to a salve. Um, specifically with the purple dead nettle, um, I think it would be helpful uh, made into like a tincture for seasonal allergies. Um, and I think that it, due to the, the flavonoids that it contains, it, um, it helps to slow the release of histamines. So it, it's helpful with like uh, itchy eyes or uh, things like that. Um, actually, my husband last year, he, he got like out of nowhere, his, he had this allergic thing with his eyes and they got really red and puffy and itchy. It was really bothering him. And luckily I had uh, some purple dead nettle dried out. So I um, made it into a decoction. So you, you just take the plant material and you kind of, um, add, you add water and then you make it into like basically a really strong herbal tea. Um, I actually added in chamomile and some dried mullein leaves that I had on hand too. And I made it into a compress and put it on his eyes. And the inflammation went down his eyes weren't itchy anymore. And he was like really surprised. He was like, I, I honestly can't believe that worked. <laughs> so right. um, there's a little firsthand experience with the purple dead nettle there. Um, so I'm going to go back to, okay. Actually, I can, I can remove it from the stream. So you don't actually have to, next time you share it, I could just remove it when you're done. So you Oh, to, okay. All right. <laughs> that could be easier. Okay. Um, so yeah, so did we talk about how to prepare it? Yeah, so um, the uh, leaves and flowers are edible on both plants. You can add them to green smoothies or um, you can juice them. Uh, you can use them in soups or stir fries, stews. You can add the leaves to salads, but I did mention that the um, they're pretty f like fuzzy, the leaves, so they may not be the uh, most pleasing when it comes to texture. Um, and some people will say that um, they kind of taste like kale. Uh, they do have a really like a strong earthy flavor is the only way I really know how to describe it. Um, it both being in the mint family, they, they, uh, they're both in the mint family, but they don't have any type of minty taste or smell to them. And then you can use them topically like I was talking about as a poultice or a compress. Um, infused into oils and added to salves. Okay, let's see. Um, so I did, you did mention about um, dandelion's benefits. So this one has the vitamin A and C as well, the antioxidants okay. that we talked about. Um, 
the arthritis relief and managing blood sugar. I'm not sure if you mentioned that one. Hey, sweetheart. Okay, so um, let's see. I think I saw something else. It also is high in protein and minerals. And so let's see, I have lots of henbit in my yard. Not sure if I have the purple dead nettle. And then great content, ladies. Thank you. Um, let's see, I believe I have one of them in my backpack, my backpack yard last year. I knew it was mint, but I couldn't identify it. Purple flowers and smells lovely. And hey, Vivi, thank you for joining. Only. Only one of these grow in my area per Google, but I have not seen have not seen either. Okay. So hey Bibby says nettle with mornon tea leaf and yerba santa for allergies. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for adding that. And Vicky Puddle Ranch says, Wow, I think I need a bigger notebook and a larger pen. This information is invaluable. Thank you for having this chat and live. I have seasonal allergies and I'm going to look further into this. Oh, yeah. yay. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I was thinking the same thing. Okay. So the next one we're going to go. Oh, we did hand it with the nettle. Yeah. So next we can go into. And so let me. Um, hello. Let me take my um, screen sharing off. So next hello. we're going to go. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Sorry. Next, we're going to go into <laughs> Creepin' Charlie. Bye-bye. Yes. See you later. So I, I do have some pictures of Creeping Charlie. I will pull them up. Sorry. This whole screen thing is weird for me. Okay. I'm just going to pull them up, and then I'll, I'll share the screen, so that way they're up already. Yes, um, I have them, too, but we'll see. Um but your pictures are from your own um, lawn and everything, right? Your own. Yeah, picture. yeah. The pictures, um, yeah, I've taken them on like my lawn and everything. A lot of them are just screenshots of um, parts of videos that I've made. Um, so let me do this share. Now, Creeping Charlie is it's a it's a funny one because. A lot of people cannot stand Creeping Charlie. It just, it will just take over an area uh, so easily. And um, it has a very, it, it's a creeping plant. So it sprawls out along the ground and it'll root right from the, the nodes and everything. Uh, can it, Is it up on the screen? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay, just making sure. Um, With the flowers, um, it looks really pretty. It is really pretty. I, I always admire it when it's in bloom. Um, it's, it's just funny to me because like a lot of these plants, people, they're, they're dead set on eradicating them from their lawns so that they look nice and manicured and everything. But uh, it's like they're, they're actually really helpful. And I, I think that they add some beauty to the landscape as well. Um, so the flowers of this one. So Creeping Charlie is actually sometimes confused with henbit and purple dead metal as well. It is another member of the mint family. So it uh, has the square stems also. Um, this one has more of a creeping habit than the other plants. Um, the, other one, the other plants kind of grow upright and uh, they, a henbit and purple dead nettle are annuals. And then creeping Charlie is perennial. So it will come back year after year. Um, the flowers are also tulipped and they have uh, five petals, I believe. Yeah. And then the leaves are um, like kidney shaped. They're lobed around the edges and they're shiny. They're often shiny, uh, bright green. And then sometimes they have like purple and uh, a purple and reddish color around the edges as well. Um, so, and, the, and this one produces like a very interesting little seed. Um, it looks like a little sack or something. It reminds me of spider eggs. Um, it, it like produces it in the summertime. And this one is another plant in, uh, it grows pretty much all year around here. And in the spring, the leaves are definitely much more palatable than later on in the season. And the leaves are the edible part and the part that have been uh, most commonly used um, in traditional herbal medicine. Um, so the leaves have been used for 
all types of ailments uh, on the re of the for the respiratory tract. Um, specifically helpful for like the ear, ears, nose, and throats and conditions associated with that area. Um, they've been used as a mild expectorant, so they help to um, get out excess mucus from the lungs. Um, the leaves were also used at one point to flavor and help preserve beer, and that's where one of the common names uh, ale hoof comes from for this plant. Um, so mostly with Creeping Charlie, what I do is I just make it into an herbal tea. It does have uh, a flavor that a lot of people aren't too fond of. Um, it has like a slightly minty flavor to it, but I find it to be more earthy, um, slightly bitter. And um, I'm trying to think, I was reading into some of the studies or trying to find some studies that have been done with Creeping Charlie. And I was surprised to find out that um, they, they, it was a study done on uh, rats or mice, and they found that it was helpful in healing a certain um, condition with the liver where the bile duct is kind of like clogged, um, and it, it helped them to heal that and protect, protect them against further damage of the, litter, uh, the liver. I can't uh, remember the exact name of the condition it was. I, th I think I have it written down. Cholest cholestasis was the name of it, a uh, condition where the flow of bile stops or slows. Um, and I was also really surprised to find out that um, two compounds found within, or three actually found within Creeping Charlie were rosemaranic acid, ursulic acid, and I always massacre uh, old, I have it right now. Uh, O-L-E-A-N-O-L-I-C, -E if you wanted to know. Um, so the ursulic acid and the other one that I can't pronounce um, are actually known to um, uh, be like anti-tumor compounds. So okay. they um, are helpful for cancer really. Um, now I don't think that there were studies done specifically on Creeping Charlie um, to show its anti-tumor effects, but those two compounds are known to have that effect. Right. And um, the, rosemaranic, uh, the rosemaranic acid, it has antioxidant value to it. Um, so I, I thought that was really interesting because I usually have only looked into the traditional uses of Creeping Charlie and it was nice right. to see that there was a little bit done when it comes to like science and studies. Right. I added in a picture here. This is from my notes. Um, like you said, the relative of mint, and that's why it looks so similar, um, about use, being used in beer, used for inflammation and congestion, which you already spoke about. So let's see. FR Humphrey says, I have this one too. So he's really lucky. He has everything so far. Missy says, I'm typing notes in my phone at Stinky, at Stinky Puddle Ranch and making bookmarks online. We will be free of these allergies in no time. Oh, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> Some of these are very aggressive and hard to control in lawns, but can be grown in containers. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And that's why most people, especially at Creeping Charlie, it is very aggressive. It's constantly creeping into our garden beds and I've noticed that it grows really well on edges or like rock right. walls. Um, that's where it's like, it'll. we have like raised beds that are made uh, with rocks that we've laid down and it just loves to grow along that and then try to root itself into the garden beds. Right. Um, let's see. So right on Missy, sweet relief for sure. And then I forgot to mention that I do have in the description, I do have a link to our channel, but I did put it here in the chat too. Uh, Creepin' Charlie Cough Remedy. Hey, love lady. She said hello to everybody. And Gigi. Hello. hello. <laughs> hey, Gigi Naturals. I was just in your live earlier today. She has so many fruit trees. Hey, Silver Prepping Grandma. In the garden again. Nice to see you, too. I'm just making sure I catch up. Oh, he's saying hello to everybody. Oh, that's Creepin' Charlie. Do you have that one, Gigi? 
it's so interesting. You guys let us know which ones that you have and how you tried, if you have tried, or if you feel comfortable. Um, oh, yeah, it's something to note with Creeping Charlie is, um, and like with all of these plants that we're talking about, some people do have allergic reactions. So that's really important to take note of. Um, um, something you can do is like, make sure you're only trying one wild plant at a time and just using small amounts of it. Um, so that way, if you by chance have an allergic reaction, you know which plant caused it. And also with Creeping Charlie, I know it's toxic uh, to horses um, and it contains a compound called Pulagone or Pulagone, Pulagon, um, and it, um, in really high amounts, it can be toxic. So right. that's important. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad that you mentioned that because that's something I forgot to mention. And also um, with the nettles, because you know the hairs and they can really sting you, you need to um, use gloves and stuff if you're touching it. But also if you boil it, then that can help with the, taking the irritants out. Okay, yeah, uh, like for sting oh, nettles, uh, right? Uh-huh. Just for just for the nettles, all um, all of them with the little hairs on it. Okay. Uh huh. Thank you for everyone hitting the like button. Oh yeah, thank you for everybody that um hit the like button. Thank you. So if nobody has any questions about that one, oh, and I did miss it, and I did append it. My name is Felicia. I'm sorry, I referred to you as as, as a he. So um, thank you, Felicia. I'm sorry about that. Thank you for correcting me. Okay, so the next one, do you want to talk about self-heal? Self-heal, yes. Um, this is one of my all-time favorite wild plants. Um, I'll get some pictures up in a moment. But um, the leaves and flower buds are edible. Um, they have like a, they have a mild flavor, in my opinion. Some people say they're bitter. Um, they're slightly mucilaginous, so they contain a good amount of mucilage in them, which gives them um, an emollient action on the skin and a demulcent action when ingested. Um, it's, it's lightly demulcent, though, and, and we'll get into that uh, <clears throat> later. So um, Selfiel is actually another member of the mint family, and that's why I figured we could do that after the other mints. Um, but this one mainly grows in the summertime, and you'll see it popping up and blooming, um, in my area at least, uh, from June to September. So once the heat of the summer really starts to come in uh, is when you'll start to see it. And then it Did dies you back. Did that one? Did you yes. have that one? Okay. Let me get Sorry, that. Uh, no, I no, that's that fine. That what we're referencing. Let me get it. Again, bear with me while I'm doing this. Okay, so I'm gonna pull up a few and then we can really go through it. Identification. Okay, so, and then I'm just gonna pull up a third one and then I'll, I'll share the screen. And what's everybody's um, familiarity with some of these um, weeds or herbs that we're mentioning? Are you ready? Sharing oh, okay. screen, no. sorry. <laughs> sure. Here we go. Okay, so I'll pull this one up first. So self-heal. Um, I have, I, sorry, I haven't been saying the scientific names of them, but this one's scientific name is Prunella vulgaris. It has a lot of other common names, including heal all and woundwort, carpenter's weed, uh, but it's most commonly called self heal or heal all. And I think that's for great reason because it's so beneficial in so many different ways. Um, it's a low growing herbaceous perennial plant in the mint family, so it has that square stem. Uh, the flowers, um, I, I've seen a lot of people's like pictures of it and usually theirs seem to be darker, but the flowers of the self heal we have around here is a lighter, like almost lavender color. Um, it's a, another tubular, two-lipped plant and the upper lip kind of forms like a little hood over the bottom lip. And the upper lip is that light purple color and the bottom lip tends to be more white in color and it's like fringed. Uh, the leaves are lance shaped and um, they grow in opposite pairs. 
Um, so I guess I'll get into the medicinal benefits now. So um, sulfiel has mainly been used traditionally as a wound healing plant and for um, inflammatory skin conditions. Um, and then internally, it's been used for uh, respiratory ailments, um, digestive disorders, and I, it is antimicrobial, anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, and um, astringent. It's also slightly demulcent. So all of that paired together uh, really is just, it makes it wonderful for wound healing. Um, also internal wounds like ulcers in the mouth and the stomach. Um, it's great for sore throats. And like I had already said, respiratory ailments because it has that demulcent, uh, demulcent action to it due to the content of mucilage found within it. So um, we're gonna be talking about more mucilaginous plants after self heal, but I figure right now I'll kind of get into the demulcent action of mucilage. So mucilage is kind of like, if you've ever eaten okra or um, if you've ever eaten any of the plants we talk about, you when you bite into it, it kind of has this gooey, slimy texture to it. And what that does is it helps to coat mucous membranes really well and soothe inflammation in mucous membranes. So um, when taken internally, it comes in direct contact with the digestive tract. Um, it's kind of a mystery of how it works when it comes to respiratory conditions and urinary tract conditions because it doesn't exactly come in direct contact with those tissues. However, it does still have a demulcent action in those tracts as well. So uh, for digestion, um, plants that contain the mucilage help soothe inflammation. Um, they help, uh, they have some, it helps with, uh, as a laxative as well. Um, it's just very soothing and it helps to heal uh, any types of, uh, any type of inflammation and wounds internally. And paired with its astringent properties, it's, it's just all the ground great for wound healing, like I've already said. So for the respiratory tract, um, demulcent plants that contain mucilage are typically good for dry coughs, dry coughs, or very like hot, um, tight conditions in the respiratory, uh, in the lungs. Um, so if you ever have a dry cough where you can kind of feel that there's mucus stuck in there, but it's not being expectorated, um, that's what the, mu the mucilage is very helpful for. Um, it helps to first soothe that inflammation, uh, relax it a little bit, and then the like sliminess, it helps to um, break up really uh, thick mucus and therefore helping aid in expectoration. So I'll just sum that up a little bit there. Um, the, the demulcent action is good for sore throats, um, and dry, very heated uh, lung conditions. Uh, so back to self heal, I kind of want to just give that little um, background to demulcent action, um, since we're going to be talking about it for self heal and then some plants later. Um, so specifically, we talked about the traditional, more of the traditional uses for self heal. Um, but this is a plant that has actually been very widely studied. Um, sadly, most of these studies were limited to animal studies on rodents, and um, there were mostly studies done in vitro, so like in a test tube. Um, but they have really, they showed really promising results with these studies, including um, its ability to be protective against UVA and UVB radiation from the sun. Um, it's also, um, it was found to be helpful to uh, lower blood sugar, blood sugar levels and also um, help to uh, prevent some of the symptoms associated with diabetes. Um, it's also, the list goes on. Let me just, let me look at my notes so I don't miss anything. But um, diabetes. Oh, okay, go ahead. I was going to have a question 
I'm not Ooh. sure if you know. Um, Stinky Puddle Ranch said, is this related to yarrow? For some reason, the leaves remind me of a yarrow. It is not related to yarrow, actually. Um, Self-heal is in the mint family. Yarrow is in the Asteraceae family. So like the daisy family. Mm -hmm. um, but it is used very similarly to yarrow. And these are two, pair, uh, two herbs that I like to pair together very often, infusing them into oils together for salves. And um, also I've actually been drinking a lot of yarrow and self-heal tea lately to kind of help with digestive, with digestion. And um, it, it, I find it really helpful. Yarrow is used very similarly. Um, I actually made a video about five medicinal wildflowers that I was harvesting this summer and yarrow, both yarrow and self-heal were in that one. Okay. Um, yeah. So then, is, are there any more questions? Uh, let's see. So Nikki said, that's a great tip to eat one at a time in small amounts, similar to when introducing new foods to babies. Yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah. Which one? Um, let's see. No problem. Um, I have burr clover in my yard. Um, let's see. Self-heal. Someone shared seeds with me for this one. Drop them in a container this week. Hopefully it will thrive. And then BB says, all heal is when I was researching last week while seed searching. So that's really good. So Yeah, it, it's such a helpful plant. And if you don't have it growing wild around, I absolutely suggest growing it in a container. Um, uh, so that way it doesn't uh, spread all over your garden or anything. But Right. And um, sorry, I didn't mean to ignore those. I'm mixing some bread dough. Well, thank you for being here and listening to us. And I did look up because I wasn't familiar with, with Tina. She said she had fur clover. So I wanted to just show a picture, um, share my screen really quickly. Um, let me see. Are you familiar with burr clover? Share. I'd have to see a pic. I, there are a lot of different clovers yeah, that we have. There's different names, and that's what I um. Have yeah, thought. common names are. So um. Okay. Um. So I is it, I think another common name for that one might also be um, a black medic or something. Yeah. Or a hops clover. Um. It says medicago. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, but I just wanted to show that because um, if people were curious like me. Okay. So um, go ahead back with what you were saying. Okay. Yeah. So um, some of the studies I mentioned. Um, yeah. Sh show, um, show, show a picture. Yeah. Okay. So I had the one picture up and I'll try to. Oh, sorry. Well, just, somebody was asking. Camera off. Somebody wants to share, email a picture for me to show. Okay, uh, absolutely. So, yeah, but you can um, go ahead with your notes. And once I get the email, I'll add it in when we're finished. Okay, uh, I just have this one and you can just take it off. Oh, it's really blurry. Never mind. No, it looks it looks fine. I think it's good. Okay, it's kind of like pixely, but there's um, a better close up on the flowers. Um, and then I will just keep going with the uh, studies done and if you want to share the picture. So um, I mentioned the uh, diabetes, UVA. It was also um, helpful against gingivitis and uh, it was found to have a um, antiviral action to it where it kind of like it inhibits the ability of a virus to infect a cell and therefore replicate. And the specific um, studies were done with HIV, herpes, and I believe human papillomavirus. So it was, it was especially helpful in the treatment of herpes simplex virus. Um, some other ones, it was uh, tested for anti-cancer capabilities. And for this one, um, there were two studies that I wanted to note. Um, the first one was an in vitro study done with human liver cells, uh, human cancer liver cells. And um, it was found to um, inhibit 
the growth and spread of the cancer. And then there was also another study done um, with 424 breast cancer patients. And what they did was they gave <clears throat> a, a prunella vulgaris extract to uh, some of the patients, I think half, and along with their cancer medication. And the ones that were taking the extract along with their cancer medications um, lived noticeably, like uh, significantly longer than the ones that didn't. And it also, um, more than half of the people who were taking it along um, with their cancer medication showed no sign of disease afterwards. Um, so. Yeah, so that's really good to know. Mm -hmm. And thank you for sharing that with us. Um, Sovereign Energy said, I'll be adding a new bucket on my patio garden with these beautiful little medically necessary plants. I like the way she said that. Mm -hmm. It's funny, I when I was gonna get my dandelion today, I saw that some was in one of my pots. It just, I had some echinacea in there and it just flew itself in there. So it's just so funny. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, the next one that we'll talk about is the wild violet. Okay. And I'm still waiting for the, let me, uh, let me just check really quick to see. And if anybody had any questions or anything as well. Um, I'm just gonna pull up some pictures for that one. I don't have any, yeah, I don't have any, um, I don't have the email yet. So uh, we can go next to the wild violet. Okay. Yeah, and whenever you get that email, we can go back to self heal for a little while. I love self heal, so definitely don't mind. Oh, thank you. Okay, so the next one is wild violet, which um, for me in my area, we'll be seeing soon. It's a plant that is, it comes up in the springtime. Well, the flowers do. And then the leaves are around all the way up until fall, um, even, I've seen it even after a few frosts and the leaves, uh, the leaves and flowers are the edible part. Can, uh, can you see this picture? Um, yes, I'm sorry. Thank you. For <laughs> oh, okay. It's all right. Uh, um, it's a really beautiful too. Um, yeah. And this is an, another one that people can't stand to see it on their lawns. And I'm just like, look at it. Like it, it's so pretty and cute. Like why not? Um, but this is another demulcent herb. It contains a good amount of mucilage. So it has been used for respiratory ailments, coughs, and sore throats. It has the uh, emollient action would apply to the skin because of that mucilage content. Um, the leaves are high in vitamins A, C, and um, I think rutin. Honestly, I don't even know what rutin is haven't looked into it yet, but apparently it's it's good. So um, not gonna lie. Um, so the leaves and flowers can be eaten raw or cooked. And typically the flowers are made into a herbal infusion or herbal tea um, or made into a syrup. And it makes this, this beautiful color ranging from a, a light blue to a dark purple, depending on how much violets you put into it. And a fun little trick I like to do is you add, a, you squeeze a little bit of lemon juice in it and the color just completely changes right before your eyes into like a, a pink color. Um, violets are used a lot in um, desserts and added to different dishes as a garnish. You can candy the flowers, um, add them into salads. Uh, same for the leaves. You can add them to soup, salads, and since the leaves contain a lot of mucilage, they're often used um, as like a thickener for soups and stews, um, similar to the way okra is used. Um, yeah. <laughs> wow. <Wild violet. laughs> no, I love like your love of all of these plants. You can really tell. I do love them. They're they're my friends. I call them my friends. <laughs> So let's see. Uh, so Nikki from um, Everyday Life of OCD is chick. She says, I have wild, wild violet in my yard. Oh, yay. Um, very pretty um, purple flower. I'm not sure. You must have asked a question. She said, no, Sovereign Energy. I'm not sure that I remember what we were talking about. Um, 
Agreed, it's beautiful. And she says, I'm definitely guilty of whacking many of these vital plants over the years. Yikes. It happens, it happens. Wild Violet, I love this one, so pretty. I don't have this one, right? That's the one that everybody would want instead of something else, I'm sure. Honesty is the best policy. Keep up the good work, small seeds. Oh, we the chat appreciate you. Thank oh, you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not going to lie. I am so nervous right now. I can tell I'm like <laughs> turning red and everything. I've never done a live stream. So, oh, you don't have blush on? We can't tell anything. You're doing really good. Oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't talk yeah. about identification for that one if, if you wanted to go into yeah. that a little bit. Oh, um, well, we have the pictures. If you want to do the oh. pictures real quick. Okay. Yeah. Be mm -hmm. um, okay. Let me share the screen. And, um, I have to remember which one it was. I think it was this one. Okay, so she sent three pictures. She asked, um, were these weeds? Okay, so the, that is that is the wild violet. Um, so That's with, what I was thinking. Yeah, so with wild violets, there's like so many different species growing worldwide. And it's kind of, it's, sometimes it's hard to, um, identify the specific species. And that's also because the plants hybridize so easily with one another. So the species that I have growing here on our lawn is um, Viola sororia. It's common to uh, to America, or it's, it's native to America. And then um, the one that is most commonly used in herbal medicine is Viola odorata. And that's a native species to Europe and that, that one has a really sweet smell to it. So I can't say what the specific species of that is, but it does look like wild violets. And if you wanna go into the identification a little bit, um, the, the identification with wild violets is a little more generalized because there are so many different species, um, but they usually have similar traits um, from species to species. And it, lo it looks like you have a little bit of cleavers Growing she sent there, it to other pictures. So, okay, um, and I'm like that looks just like what you talk about right now. So, this um, is what she sent as well. I think that was in the picture. Okay, so that yeah. looks it looks a lot like cleavers. And uh, one thing with cleavers is it has these really thin hairs on it, and it just attaches to things like really easily. So, if that plant is like a sticky plant, it's most likely cleavers. And with cleavers um, is used as a remedy uh, or a supplement for lymphatic function. Uh, we have some growing here as well. And last year I made it into a tincture with red clover for lymphatic function and um, just added a few, a few drops in my water every day and found it to be very helpful. And then that one is common speedwell, I believe. Um, but you know, or sometimes I think it's called Veronica, or maybe that's a part of the scientific name. Um, but it, it it's it's still really tiny and hard to see, but it looks yeah. like common speedwell, which actually does have some edibility and medicinal value to it as well. It's a really pretty little flower that I see in the springtime too. Um, but I, I'm not as familiar with the uses of it. But I do know that if it is common speedwell, it has some edibility and medicinal uh, value to it as well. So um, we have some, oh, she said she was responding to you asking if we could see your stream. But I think everybody could see it because they said the the flowers were pretty. So, okay. So uh, I, I, I can pull. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Oh, go on, I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead. Oh, okay, I can pull the um, wild violet picture back up and just briefly go into identification um, okay. and then we can move I want on. You to, I want you to see the comments where um, they were talking directly to you, if you don't mind. Oh she, yeah, that's fine. Said, don't be, you're doing great. Thank you for sharing with us. Oh, thank you. Yuki Puddle Ranch said you are doing phenomenally. Oh, thank you so um, much. Uh, Felicia says you are doing great, love this. Um, Thank so, you, yeah, Felicia. Everybody said, yeah, everyone said something really positive. Thank you. You guys are so oh, sweet. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I, I was laughing to myself last night. I was like, I'm just going to freeze up on screen and just be like, I like wild plants. Wild <laughs> plants are, are good and just not know what to say or something. So thank you guys. <laughs> yeah. I told you it, it seems worse than it is. 
Okay, so go ahead. Um, go ahead. Pilot. Okay. When you're ready. So I, I am sharing my screen already. Sorry about that. Um, okay, so Wild Violet. I think I have a better picture that shows the leaves as well. I think it's, nope, that's still self-heal. Self-heal. Okay, I'm going to have to open the folder up. Sorry about this, guys. Oh, we can still right see there. Good, though. Yeah. Okay. So, um, for the most part, the leaves of wild violet are heart-shaped, uh, toothed around the edges, and they have a pointed tip. And the flowers have five petals on them, um, with the two lateral petals being bearded. So they have these, like, small white hairs on them. Um, they are violet colored. Sometimes they're more it like a light lavendery color. Um, and they can also be white or yellow. And there are some cultivated varieties that are like really pretty and they're, they're related. They're in the same family as pansies. So um, Oops, they kind of resemble that. And there are a lot of really pretty ones that you can grow in your garden that have different colors to them. Yeah, and I really, I really like pansies. So. Yeah, um, Missy said my son has definitely brought me wild violet flowers. Um, and so let's see. Then Missy said, "Sweet boy, Missy." Um, and she said, "Thank you for um, helping her identify." Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, this was the uh, the person who sent you the emails. Yes. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh huh. And Nikki says, um, when I was a child, I definitely brought home dandelion to my mom. We would place the flower under the chin, and if your chin glowed yellow, it meant that you like butter. <laughs> That's so cute. We used to do that too with uh, with buttercups. Um, <laughs> I didn't know you could, it worked with the dandelions too. That's so sweet. Uh, my daughter is always bringing me little dandelions or making the making a wish with them and uh, this is great information thank you Gigi um, thank you find something you love and have fun doing it <laughs> that's um Nikki from the OCD chick that's um her slogan okay um, amazing content thank you Tina he really is um he just bought me a dandelion I might change your folklore to bathing through to get him in the tub not sure. I'm not sure um, if I was supposed to read that out loud, but okay. So then we can go to the next one, which is, oh, chickweed. And um, Gigi has a video on chickweed. Okay. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah. It seems like there are a lot of other channels in here. So I'll have to yeah. check you guys out. And A to Z Gardener. Hey, from um, sunny Arizona. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, so do you have any pictures of that? I'm going to. Um, I think I only have one picture of the chickweed. I do have some. So let me. Um, and I do have some here. Let okay. Me my screen. Um, let's see. Just give me a moment. Okay. Let's see. Um. There we go, chickweed. Um, so what I just have is that it's used for stomach and bowel problems, um, lung diseases, wounds and skin ulcers, joint pain and other conditions like scurvy. So I have some here, but mine isn't flowered. So it's gonna look like the one that is um, to the left. Let me see. Um, let me stop sharing it really quickly. And hopefully you guys can see it. I tried to take some so you guys can kind of see it. Um, I have to figure out how to make it show up. It's kind of hard. I don't know I'm glad you that you it. have that um, because there is like a little clip uh, to like aid in identification with the stems. So maybe we could try it out on camera. Okay. Uh, I've actually never done it myself, but I do know about it. Um, so if you like gently pull on the stem, the outer stem will kind of just break apart. One of the stems? Yeah, so okay. yeah, one of the stems and you kind of just gently Oops. pull on it. The outer stem should like break apart and then the inner part of the stem is kind of like elastic and it will probably like 
stay oh, and just see. be stretchy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's so cool. I'm glad we <laughs> could show hard, that. But yeah. Yeah, and that's um, one little tip to help um, aid in identification um, and separate it from poisonous lookalikes. Um, the other tip is that it doesn't it doesn't contain a milky sap within it, and then um, it's interesting because usually when plants have like little hairs on them, they're uh, it's kind of like um, in one area or it's just going all around the stem. But for chickweed on the stem, there's like a little line of hairs that kind of, it changes at every pair of leaves. So it like, it, it, it's it's funny. I don't know exactly how to explain it, but the, the line of hairs, it changes uh, direction at right. every pair of leaves. Um, so the flowers- Really in depth with, with your descriptions. But no, the hair- no, I said I just like how you get so in depth. Oh. That's why I had to I had to go first on this one, so I can't go. Oh, after. Yeah. Um. So with the flowers of chickweed, it, it appears they appear to have um, ten petals on them, but it's actually just five petals that are um, that have two lobes. So it's a five petaled flower that looks like ten petals. Um, they're very small and white, and they kind of resemble stars. Um, their scientific name is St uh, Stellaria media. So I, I think that's where the name comes from because it kind of, they resemble little stars. Um, and you had mentioned that the medicinal properties, um, they've been used for respiratory ailments, digestive issues, and chickweed is also another herb that is slightly emulsant. So it makes sense that it would be a very helpful for those conditions. It's also used um, as an emollient topically and can be added to uh, infused oils and into salves for topical use. Um, it's another plant that can be eaten raw or cooked. Stems, leaves, flowers, and the seeds are edible. Um, it can be juiced and I think, I don't know if I said added to smoothies already. Um, so the, we have two types of chickweed growing around here. And uh, the first is the, um, this type of chickweed. And then we have one that's called mouse ear chickweed. And it has like, it's really fuzzy, um, but it can be used similarly. It's just like a textural thing, I guess, um, when it comes to the hairs. <clears throat> okay, we have some comments. Um... Oh, and I just like, I started feeding it to my chickens as well because they really like it. So I guess that's where the name comes from. So she mm -hmm. said, if we may also promote weight main maintenance, let me go outside and find some of that. Yeah, it, it does actually. Um, that was one of the traditional uses. And there was a um, small study done that they did on mice. I believe it was mice or rats mm -hmm. that the um, they were obese and the chickweed um, extract that they gave them helped them to lose weight. Um, they had a reduction in body fat and liver fat as well. So what did you say the other, would you say the other type that you have was again, you said mouse? Uh, the other type is, um, mouse ear chickweed. I don't know the scientific name for it, but. Okay. And then um, we also have this, oops, I'm sorry. This was used as medicine in the Lord of the Rings. I did oh, not wow. know that. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go back and watch it. <laughs> right, I think I have this, more weeds than grass in my yard. Yeah, I have very little grass left in mine. That's awesome, I, I mean, I'd rather have medicinal and edible plants growing on the lawn than grass, I mean. Yeah, I mean, it breaks my husband's heart, but I don't, I don't it doesn't bother <laughs> me at all. He, he wants to have something to mow, but. Let's see, mm -hmm. does chickweed grow in dry climate? I'm in zone 8B. Actually, I had some stuff written down. Um, so it grows in yards, in disturbed sites, moist and wet areas and woodlands. So it's more, it likes um, wet climates. Yeah, I tend to see um, the common chickweed more in forests with like rich soil. I don't have any of it on my lawn. But if I take a little walk, I can find plenty of it on the forest floor. Um, yeah. But I found that the mousier chickweed that I mentioned um, tends to grow in more like 
uh, drier conditions oh, okay. on the property. So perhaps um, you might uh, be able to find that variety. Of yeah, I'm going to look that up so maybe I can show them. Um, let's see. Um, chickweed also is another one that doesn't have any poisonous lookalikes. Did you say, um, did you have any notes about, about preparation or anything like that? Um, yeah, so uh, chickweed is definitely like a favorite of foragers to add into a wild greens pesto. Um, and uh, salads, soups, um, another herb that it can be used topically as well. Um, I feel like there was something else I wanted to say about chickweed, but I just can't, uh, I can't remember. Well, we'll stay on it for a little bit. I want to show a picture of the mouse ear chickweed. Okay, so, yeah. Um, so possibly they have it, but it looks it looks very similar. Um, um, let's add it in one second. The mouse ear chickweed. So let's see. So it does look very similar. I'm trying to see if I can see a full view. Maybe that's a better picture. Yeah, the way I could describe it is it it, it tends to be like oh, that's a little bit, form like more of a mat on the ground. At least the um, one the mouse ear chickweed that we have. Mm -hmm. um, it likes to grow in, um, and this is all just off of observation um, with the two varieties that we have growing here. The mouse ear chickweed tends to grow in full sun disturbed soils. Um, it's always popping up in our garden. And um, yeah, it's very fuzzy. Okay, yeah. So that that one looks like a good picture. Yeah, it does look like you said it grows like in a mat. So it, it probably spreads a little bit more than the chickweed, than the um, chickweed that I showed. I mean, I, I don't know if I'd say it, it spreads more, but it, it definitely like grows more, um, like close to the ground, like the chickweed does too, and the uh, the common chickweed, and it spreads very nicely, and but it has like a little bit of a more like upright habit to the stems, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. Miss says, and I do like your new picture, Missy. Uh, I have a bundle of chickweed flowers from yesterday's bouquet. Crazy coincidence. Oh, nice. Um, I am yeah. eating chickweed salad all summer. <laughs> <laughs> thank you everyone for coming um yes thank you um i am in 10a slash b zone i'm in 7b we have the clay soil which is why we have the chickweed because it really likes it it's really wet and moist here we have a lot of it what okay. zone are you in do you know we are in 6b and we also have lots of clay um, yeah. rocky in soil. as well okay mm -hmm. Let's see. I'm going to douse myself with Avon Skin Soul Soft and head out to the forest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she says, do not read. Okay, I won't read. I won't put it on the screen. <laughs> uh, let me see. Uh, while we're on chickweed, I'm trying to see if there was something that I, um, there was something I wanted to say. And you talked about how to cook it. Um, it says to boil it for two to five minutes and add it with other less delicate greens near the end of their cooking period. So it doesn't need to cook as long. Um, and it says a related edible species is James chickweed. So I'm not okay. familiar with that one either. But I guess I can show a picture of that. Do you have anything to add to this one? Or? Um, I do know that uh, chickweed... Uh, has caused adverse reactions in some people. And I, I had a little note here that um, something about, I can't find it now, but it was something about how it, it holds nitrates. So it, it if eaten in large amounts or um, if eaten by someone who's sensitive to in, ingesting nitrates, um, it could cause like headaches and dizziness and upset stomach and things like that. So just, oh, okay. just have to note that. Yeah, that's good information. 
Okay, so let's see. LOL. Okay. Um, so let's go to the next one, which we have is the common mallow. Common mallow. Okay, I will pull up my pictures of common mallow. So okay. it's so funny ha having to use the television yeah. screen and him like leaning over. Sorry about that. Um, so here's a nice picture of it. I will share it now. Okay, so common mallow. Um, this is another plant with a demulcent emollient action. It is, um, um, I'd say that the, the mucilage content of it um, is more prominent in the roots, but the whole plant contains mucilage. Um, the roots, the little seed pods, the leaves and stems are all edible with this one. And in this picture, you can see the little seed pods um, kind of look like a little button. And one of the common names is button bush or also cheeses because um, people said that it resembled a cheese wheel and you can eat. Um, do you mind using your mouse to show them? Just oh yeah, so I'll, I'll just kind of, can you see my mouse there circling around it? <laughs> um, so right yeah, there is this. Oh, okay. Someone oh. said, oh, I'm growing marshmallow, which marshmallow is another one that you said, like how you talked about the mucilages. Yeah. I like to use it for that, for the sore throat. Mm -hmm. um, this is actually so related to marshmallow as well. It's just the more common weedy version of it. Not as intensely mucilaginous as the marshmallow. And it's definitely not used um, as, as, um, as much as marshmallow is in herbal medicine, but um, I'm growing marshmallow this year too, actually. Um, but up until uh, up until now, I've just been using the uh, common mallow similarly to marshmallow um, for <clears throat> respiratory health and that demulcent action it has for sore, dry throats and um, like a dry cough. Um, and FR Humphrey says, um, saponins and nitrate salts, both found in chickweed, pose a risk of toxicity if eaten in excess. So I Yes, thank you. Thank you for clarifying that. Mm -hmm. um, so with mallow, I, let me just grab my little notes I have. Yeah, I like the one. picture that you took, and I think that it looks like the leaves are kind of fanned out. Yeah. Like with the little um, folds, it looks like. Yeah, so they're they're um they're like round leaves and they kind of like start off as a heart-shaped leaf in a way a heart-shaped leaf in a way, but mm -hmm. they don't have the pointed tip. Um they are scalloped around the edges. Um and this one the stems all grow from a central like base um mm -hmm. where it meets the roots underground and um <clears throat> the flowers of it, I have a picture specifically of the flowers, so I will pull that one up and show you them. Okay, so the flowers, um, they're usually white or very light pink in color. They have five petals, and the ones that we have have these like little pink streaks coming out from the center of them. So that's just a little bit on identification. Um, and as we were talking about before, uh, common mallow <clears throat> is used very similarly. It can be used very similarly to marshmallow um, for, di uh, for digestive issues as well. That um, demulcent action is very soothing to the mucosa of the respiratory, digestive, and urinary tract. Um, and it's also been used for wound healing and inflammatory skin conditions as well. Okay. Um, so the next we can go to purslane. Let's see. 19. Um, I can share uh, my screen for what I have on there. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't have a, a picture for purslane. Okay. So um, let me just 
do that really quickly. Well, it seems like it worked out when you don't have a picture. I have a picture. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So let's share. Let's see. Um, okay. So there we go. Okay. So, yeah. So what I just had was this also named um, pigweed. Um, so the leaves, the stems, and the seeds are um, can be eaten or edible, raw or cooked. And it's a source of iron, vitamins A and C, omega-3s. I know this one, um, there's a good video by Prep Setters. I don't know if you ever heard of the channel, but they talk about purslane as well. Um, okay. It's, it I'll grows a lot of times on the sidewalks. So, yes, really absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this one we find popping up in our garden beds because um, the soil is a little bit more well-drained than the lawn and the rest of the yard. Um, Personally, like yeah, like you said, it's high in omega-3 fatty acids, and it's one of the highest <clears throat> green leafy vegetable sources of omega-3 fatty acids. So it's um, just really, really um, healthy for you. And it also has one of the highest vitamin A content of other leafy green vegetables. Uh, I'm pretty sure it has more vitamins. Uh, vitamin C and E than spinach, has uh, potassium, iron, uh, magnesium, and some other really great minerals. Um, it also contains a, a, some omega, the omega-6 fatty acid called DL, D, DLA, DLA, I think, which is um, essential for brain function, at skeletal and reproductive health. Um, so this one is a sprawling pr plant. Um, it, uh, it, I don't think that this one doesn't root from the stems. Um, I think it also, just like with common mallow, it starts from a central base and then the um, stems sprawl out. Uh, it's a very succulent plant, also has mucilage in it. Um, it kind of resembles the houseplant jade, if anyone has grown the house, uh, jade as a house plant. It kind of looks like jade a little bit to me. <clears throat> uh, it has these small little yellow flowers. The leaves are oval, like oval shaped, green, and sometimes they're like uh, red or reddish brown around the edges, and the stems are also that reddish brown color. Um, super, super nutrient dense, wild green. Um, and like like with dandelion too, dandelion and purslane and a lot of these wild edible plants are more nutrient dense than any vegetable or leafy green that you can buy in a grocery store. Right. Um, so very beneficial. Um, I believe it's it's also used topically for different um, inflammatory skin conditions. Um, I, I know it's native to India, and I believe. Uh, I remember reading somewhere that it was one of Gandhi's favorite plants to eat. So oh, that's a wow, okay. fun fact there. Yeah. Um, let me see if I have anything else written down that I wouldn't want to miss. Oh yeah, the, with the omega threes, um, <clears throat> because purslane doesn't contain any cholesterol, it's a a good alternative of omega threes um, from let's say like fish oils that does have higher amounts. Well. It obviously has higher amounts of cholesterol than purslane because purslane doesn't have any, but it's a good alternative for people with high cholesterol who want to get those omega threes. And it's also a good alternative for vegans and vegetarians to get those omega threes as well. Um, I think that's pretty, oh, uh, vitamin, ton, the, I was getting to the, uh, has more vitamin A content than, um, and I shouldn't say more, but it has one of the highest amounts of vitamin A. And it also contains beta carotene, which is um, used by the body. It's turned into vitamin A in the body. Vitamin A <clears throat> is known to be an antioxidant. Um, it's vital for skin health, eye health, um, the health of different organs. So it's, it's a really, it's just an all around good plant to be eating. Um, right. 
And I would I would definitely recommend eating it uh, fresh or raw in salads or green smoothies. Yeah. Um, this one's another one where there's no poisonous lookalikes. And I wanted to mention that it says that you can dry the seeds one week in a shade and store in a paper bag and then grind it and use it half and half with flour. So I think that that's okay. really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and so uh, A to Z Gardener says, personally, it does grow here in the Southwest. And then FR Humphrey says, drop seeds for, the, for this one this week. So that's really good too. Yeah, I think there are different like varieties of it that you can grow mm -hmm. in the garden too. And I, I remember seeing one that had like really pretty pink flowers and stuff. So it's definitely a good one to grow. Yeah. Um, whether like you just wanna... Go ahead. Go on. No, oh, like... I was just going to say you could just grow it in a container or something. Oh, if yeah. You like, you know. I like what you said about that. It looks like a succulent uh, plant because I think that's a really good um, thing to keep in mind when you're trying to identify it. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I have jade. If I, I'm, I'm gonna grab the jade real quick. I'll be right back. <laughs> so this is this is the house plant I was talking about, and it kind of looks like this. It definitely uh, like grows upright a little more, but the leaves are very similar looking, um, shiny and green, that oval shape. Um, but this one isn't, it's not like sprawling, like purslane, but it, it reminds me of it. And then the underside has like a, like a reddish brown color that's sometimes found um, gr uh, in purslane as well. So I thought I'd just okay. show that. Yeah, no, that's good. Anything that makes it easier for people to identify stuff, you know, I feel a little bit more comfortable. I think it's good. Okay. And so, and the last one is plantain and i hope i pronounce it right that's what i that's how i think it's pronounced plantain yeah a lot of people confuse it with like the little the banana plantain, plantain. Yeah. but it's it's not it's just an herbaceous green leafy green okay. um do you have any pictures of that it's, i, I have it. one picture it's not very good but i will pull it up um yeah, it's not the greatest picture, um, but one second. Uh, let me show. I do have. Um, oh, some, those are much better. Yeah. I like to see your your pictures next. So okay, yeah, know, yeah, yeah I'll show it. Okay. Um, so with plantain, this is another plant uh, that's leaves grow in that basal rosette formation. So they're overlapping and they kind of like form somewhat look. Uh, so of a similar look to a rose. Um, and they have these seed uh, seed stalks that are very recognizable. Um, right. And the, their, the leaves on the underside, they have these veins that are very prominent. <clears throat> and that's uh, one key factor in identifying plantain. <clears throat> um, but here, would you like to uh, yeah, read your... Uh-huh, me can. I'm sorry. Uh, did you want me to keep going? Oh, I thought you wanted to show a picture. Oh, I'll, I'll show the picture. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I thought um, you wanted to uh, read. Oh, yeah. What plantain is just um, edible leaves and seeds, so it can help improve digestion or may improve. You always have to say may or can. <laughs> it can enhance the wound um, healing and lower inflammation. Absolutely. So that's the notes that I had. And uh, when I talked in my other herb video, you know, just with the yellowish color is always good for healing um, for the skin. We eat okay. palitos. It's great oh. with red chili. Okay. Oh, with the going, I'm um, talking about succulents. Oh, okay. Okay. Here, Do you know I'll what nopal is? What's that? You know what nopal is? I'm not no, sure. No, I don't. It's like cactus and um, yeah, they um, eat it. Okay. 
I'll you have just to, kind of um can you buy it? Are there any like um markets that sell it? At Mexican restaurants. Okay. Mexican restaurants they usually have it there prepared. And you can sometimes buy it in a store. Okay. Yeah. But it's just like it's this, yeah, and it kind of tastes a little sweet, but of course it has that um mucilages too. Oh, so, okay. Uh, are you ready for the picture? Um, to show oh, is it picture? not up? No. Oh, I'm so I'm sitting here like <laughs> thinking it's up on the screen. Oh my yeah, goodness. It's, no problem. it's a lot to do to go back and forth. Maybe I'll get a picture too while they wait of the no pile. Yeah, for some reason I'm I'm clicking the share and it's not it's not letting me share. I'm trying to click it here. Um, oh, as okay. I try to get it up, I, I should probably. Oh, wait. that was me um, taking mine off. It's still it's still not letting me click it. Let's see. Well, I'll, I'll just keep talking about up. it. Well, um, if you want to keep trying, I can show the picture. Oh, here we go. Here we I'll go. 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 It's going to let me do it now. Okay. okay. Took a while there. And... So that's just the nopal. And, um, oh, so okay. To, um, cook and eat. Yeah. Is that, so, um, is just that like that. prickly pear? I, I think that may be the other name. Yeah. I oh, think okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We have. Um, some growing in a container and I remember reading that you could eat it. Um, I'll have to look into it a little more. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So here's the, the plantain, the one that I have of plantain. Uh, is it up right now? Yes. Okay. So yeah, there's uh, the spiky seeds and um, they are, uh, plantain is also slightly uh, demulcent as well. So it has also been used for respiratory, uh, respiratory conditions, um, digestive issues, as you mentioned. And it is one of the better plants for wound healing, definitely. I feel like every plant we've talked about so far has some oh, use right. in wound healing mm -hmm. or inflammatory skin conditions. Um, but the plantain is one that's very commonly used for that purpose. So you can infuse it into oil. You can use it fresh as a poultice. Um, or make it put, use your infused oil in a salve. Um, fresh as a poultice is always going to be best, of course. And some people use it to, um, for small wounds, um, but also for like bee stings and uh, splinters. And uh, people say that it really helps. It has like a really good drawing ability. So it helps to draw things out from the skin really well. Um, this is one that I like to infuse into oils, add to salves, and then I also re recently used it in an herbal cough and cold syrup that I made. Um, <clears throat> usually I don't add the plantain in, but I did this time, and I really liked it. Um, so yeah, and it's also, you can eat the, lo uh, the leaves raw or cooked. The raw leaves are definitely a little bit more tough as they grow throughout the season, uh, somewhat bitter. Um, but it's not really one that I eat very much. I use it more for its medicinal qualities, definitely. Mm -hmm. And um, so Fr Humphrey says, my elders use this for wounds, cuts, stings, um, splinters. When I was a child, okay. And I think it's funny, like a prickly plant can be good for like cuts and the stings and the splinters. It's um, mm. kind of interesting, even like with the cactus and the aloes that they're good for the skin as well, even though yeah. they're so mm -hmm. rough on the exterior. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, did you have, oh, so did anybody have anything else to add to those? I think we covered all of them. Um, yeah, you know, we covered the 10. We did? Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know if, if you wanted to talk more about other plants or, um, I don't know. Does anyone have any questions? <laughs> but I'll put your link again. Um, okay. In the chat. So everyone can check out her channel. She has more in-depth videos of some of the ones that we talked about. I know you have the Creeping Charlie video. You have, um, let me see what else I can remember. And a really cool song at the end, even though I know you say <laughs> I, I, I like to do this thing where I really embarrass myself and 
I think it's funny at first, and then I'm like, why did I do that? <laughs> yeah, it shows like you're really passionate, you really are into it, and I think, and it's different. So people, I think, will enjoy your songs. Um, <laughs> some tips to sovereign energy, and thank you for the people that have been here listening to all the information this long. I really appreciate you. Sovereign energy was one of the first ones here, so I'm so glad. You have to eat them fresh and young. Nopalas can get hard and bitter as they mature, and not all nopalas are the same. At my parents' house, they grow there, and those are the best. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. I'm excited to look thank into you. it a little more now. So thank you, Fr Humphrey, another one that was here from the beginning, and of course, Tina was here from the beginning. Um, but so back to your videos. You had the creeping Charlie. Um, you had the purple dead nettle. Yeah, and I did that with with Henbit, um, Harry Bittercrest. That was the first video I ever made was on Harry Bittercrest. It's a spring it? edible right. um, in the same family as like broccoli and kale. It's definitely one of my favorite um, spring edibles. Do you have a picture um, of that? You want to add it? So, I um, might actually. Um, if I don't, I can pull it up. Thank you, probably. Tina. Let's see. Okay, so I didn't screenshot one from here. Yeah, well, I put you on the spot, but no, that's all right. Um, I and uh, what other herbs do you have? But definitely, if you want um, really in-depth videos, she has really good um, photos. I don't know if you share um, your background. What's that? I'm sorry. Oh, I was saying you have really good pictures. Oh, thank you. I don't know if you showed, if you tell about your background on your channel. Oh, um, so like the film filming? Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. It definitely, it definitely comes through and she has really good quality images and it's more like a story. It's, um, you know, not just, it's really informative. So I definitely recommend if you are interested and you want to hear her go more in depth and have, you know, the video of, the different herbs that we talked about. Um, some you. of them she has. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Um, like I said earlier, this is the way I wanted to start my channel because it's really the way that I started off was wild medicinal um, and edible plants, making herbal remedies. And then we're going to go a little bit more into gardening. Um, we, we actually have like a little homestead right now that we are slowly building into a small scale farm where we'll sell produce eventually. Um, this year we're doing a plant sell, a plant sale, and we're selling um, vegetable transplants and different types of herbs. Mm -hmm. uh, really excited about that. But Do you sell I'm, any of tinctures or salves or anything like that? I don't. Um, I was thinking about maybe uh, getting into a little operation with or it one day. Practices. Or, What's any, that? or even classes or anything. I think that people Maybe so. I'm not I'm not a trained herbalist or anything. And I know there are a lot of um herbalists that offer classes for it as well. Um right now I, I just want to make videos about it and share it so that other people like me who um uh, might not have the time or uh money to get an herbalism course um can you know, still have the, that information. Did the link that I put worked? Um, a to Z says post your channel in the notes. I, I it's in it's in the description. Um, but hopefully everybody can um, use this link here too. Um, and TT, you were here from the beginning too, so thank you. Um, thank I you. It. You ha you weren't talking uh, as much, but you were there, so it's appreciated. This was beautiful, ladies. Thank you so much for starting your channel. It's exactly what I expect. Oh, thank you. That is so sweet. I really appreciate you. I love interactive lives. This was so helpful. I'm focusing on herbal plants this year. Yeah. So her Yay. channel will definitely be a help to all of you. Um, let's see. Thank you. So if anyone had any questions, it looks like, or if you want to say anything before we go. Um. No, it worked. Okay, good. Well, I hope whoever was watching this, um, whoever watches this in the future, might be a little bit more encouraged to have a different perspective on the plants that we usually call weeds, um, learn about them, research multiple trusted sources, learn how to identify them and use them 
Um, they are a lot more helpful than you might think. Um, and I guess that's all. I, I brought some of the self heal. It's an infused oil. I infuse the self heal into coconut oil and add it to salves and just use it uh, as is topically. And I'm actually working on making a little like herbal toothpaste right now. And I'm gonna add the okay. self heal in there too. And then, um, and these like, it's it's actually pretty simple making herb infused oils and salves. Um, and this is a video a on the herb infused oil or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I have two videos on different methods you can use, um, but they're both very simple. Um, great way for beginners to start with um, using medicinal herbs is in, is infusing them or tincturing them. Um, yeah, I hope some of you might see some of these plants now and say, oh, that's purple dead nettle or, oh, look, it's chickweed or. Will you do another one on additional plants? Um, another live on additional plants? Um, if you want to, we can. Hey, it's it's your channel. I, I'm I'm definitely willing to do it again. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. I, yeah. We'll 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 be in touch. Yeah. All right. And thank, thank you, you so much yeah. for inviting me to do this. This is my first yeah, live stream ever, and I'm really happy that it was with you. So oh, thank, thank you. you. And like what you said, I just want to add with the research, especially if you have med if you uh, take medications, be careful with some of the herbs. Mm -hmm. So we can't say that enough to do some research a little bit before you delve into it. Um, and you know, get a get a um, you know handbook, a guide, or something. Um, that is very helpful. helpful. Yeah, they have a mm -hmm. lot of information in there. Oh, thank you. So I uh, believe he went over there. So that's good. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. I learned a lot. You all stay safe and blessed. Thank you. Okay. Thank so, you. Um, so thank you everybody for watching. And so. Uh, we'll try to come back and do another one of these. And you guys let us know in the comments what you want to see with herbs or anything like that, too. And um, thank you all for staying here with us so long. I appreciate it. And thank you so much for oh. giving all this information to everybody. No, oh, thank you. I had a, I had a lot of fun. Um, yeah. I'm still, still red and feel the heat yeah. on my cheeks, but it was good. <laughs> Have a great week, everybody. Thank you. Okay. Bye, everybody.